Hi, my name is Naveen Lalat, and I'm an RA at the Allen Institute for Neural Dynamics. I'm working on using expansion microscopy to clear and expand whole mouse brains before imaging on the exospin. So our goal is to examine multi-regional circuits throughout the brain, visualize the complete morphology of neurons within these circuits, and eventually link those intact neurons with their molecular identity through spatial transcriptomics. In order to map these neural circuits, we need to image an intact mouse brain with nanoscale precision. By keeping the brain intact, we don't lose any information through sectioning. We save ourselves alignment issues and the sample can be re-imaged. So we're working with two key innovations that haven't been done before. Number one is the expanded cleared whole brain. Using expansion microscopy, we have a way to prepare whole brains so that they can be cleared and expanded isotropically, which means evenly in all directions and retain structures and fluorescence so they can be imaged at high resolution. So here's a brain that's been expanded three times and cleared using this method. The other key major innovation we have is the custom light sheet microscope. I'll touch on this briefly and other members of the team will expand on this. We can use this custom light sheet microscope to image the entire volume of the expanded brain without cutting at high resolution. So here you can see the before and after of a perfused adult mouse brain. And I've outlined the expanded brain so you can see how much it has expanded. It's about three times bigger than its original size. You can see the clarity of it and how there's no tissue distortion. You can see the perfectly straight grid lines right beneath our expanded sample. So here's a quick overview of the EXM tissue processing flow. And I'll go into further detail about these steps a little later. Just briefly, the Cree driver mouse is injected with virus to induce sparse labeling. It's then perfused. It undergoes delipidation, signal amplification with immunolabeling, and finally it's embedded in a hydrogel and expanded three times. It'll be mounted in a custom chamber and then it'll be ready for imaging on the exospin at this point. So creating a clear, nicely labeled, evenly expanded whole brain is a really challenging process. And a lot of boxes need to be checked to get a good image from our sample. So what is needed for good imaging? To image fine axons brain-wide, we need high contrast. We're using a sparse labeling strategy and the viral label needs to fill the entire cell. This viral labeling needs to be bright enough to survive that expansion process. So we need to amplify the signal with amino labeling, which needs to be able to penetrate through the entire brain. We also need tissue to be very clear so we can image through that intact sample. We use delipidation to minimize light scattering which also allows penetration of dyes and antibody. So we can see that example here at the top of the slide. If the delipidation is not thorough enough, we end up with insufficient clarity, even after gel embedding and expansion. To get the resolution we need, the brain has to be evenly expanded. As the brain expands, it moves structures apart and becomes mostly water, which also helps us give us that clarity we require. So now I'll talk a little bit about our viral strategy. We need good coverage because we want to target neurons throughout the brain. So we retroorbitally inject a virus that crosses the blood-brain barrier. This gives us brain-wide labeling. We need bright labeling to see fine structures like long-range projection neurons. So we use the high titer of reporter viruses. Using a limiting titer of TTA virus gives us that sparse labeling. And this also makes segmentation much simpler. So it's not enough that you just have good labeling, you need bright labeling. So when you expand that tissue, you're moving everything farther apart and diluting the fluorophore. To enhance that brightness even more, we make an antibody conjugate customized to have a higher degree of labeling than what can be found with commercial antibodies. This antibody amplification gives us that bright signal we need for high contrast imaging. So we need to achieve the resolution needed to visualize these fine labeled structures throughout the brain. How do we do this? The solution is to expand the brain. We will pull things apart while keeping the native and structure, structure intact. The proteins in the sample are first bound to an anchor throughout the entire brain. The brain is then embedded in a gel matrix, which binds to that anchor. 
It's then digested, which allows the brain to be expanded in water. So the water pulls all these structures apart. Everything is expanded evenly in all directions, so there's no distortion of the tissue. In this way, we can expand the brain to the size we need to achieve high resolution. In our case, we're expanding the brain three times its original size. So here's an example of what we want to achieve. An intact mouse brain, the neurons and their fine axonal projections have been sparsely and brightly labeled brain-wide, and the tissue has been cleared and expanded so that we can image deep inside the tissue and achieve the resolution needed to visualize those fine structures. Once we have finished processing our sample, the last step is it, for it to be mounted in a chamber to allow it to be imaged on the exospin. We can prepare the most perfect sample in the world, but if we can't image it properly, it's all for naught. It needs to be held in place during imaging to prevent sample movement and to allow access to the sample on the dorsal and medial sides of the brain. These images show you some of the major steps involved in embedding our sample. It's very delicate at this stage, so handling it carefully is extremely important. So the first the sample is positioned in the chamber, so the dorsal side will face the top and the medial side will face the front. Agros is poured around the sample and fills the chamber. This will hold the sample in the correct position. The chamber is sealed and the agros is allowed to solidify. The top and side panels are removed to expose the sample. These solid sides are replaced with glass panels to allow the brain to be imaged. And here's a very clear illustration of what the sample looks like when it has been embedded in the chamber and is ready to pass on to our imaging team. And with that, we'll hear from Xiaoyun Zhang about how this brain is imaged with the SPIM hardware.